What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys one of my favorite control decks of all time and that is Yosenju. Now Yosenju is one of actually the first control decks that I ever played and I've had so much fun with it throughout the years so I wanted to show you guys how you could play it competitively in today's format. Now that doesn't mean that you guys are going to take this deck and go to a YCS and win a YCS with it but if you guys want a really fun deck to play, a rogue deck to play, an anti-meta deck to play, I think this is a way to go. So if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. We upload five days a week here on the channel, Monday through Friday, and you guys are gonna get a little bit of everything through the week, so I hope you guys enjoy. And with that, let's get into the video. Okay, so to get started off with the deck profile here, we are starting off with the ratios that I have not changed, that I won't change. No, I'm not playing Isna. I'm not playing any of the new ones. We're playing the OG commas that are the most important ones. They are the best ones. So that's three Yosendra comma one, three Yosendra comma two, 3 Yosenju, 3, as well as 2 Yosenju Sujin. This is all you need to play. Trust me, you do not need to play Isna or any of those cards. Yes, they have some utility, but they don't actually help you win games. And the point of being competitive is not to have all these like cool gimmicky things. It's to be able to make as quick plays as possible that'll get you to the end result that you want, which is winning the game. So these are the best ones because these are the ones you want to draw. These are the ones you want to search into. And these are the ones that are going to help you push for damage and do other things. So if you guys don't know, comma 1 lets you bounce a card on the field back to your opponent's hand comma two can attack directly but it's only half the damage it's not that important the effect of that one but the most important part of comma two is that it's the biggest attack one which is really nice especially with something like tanky because this kind of helps you push for more poke damage and i'll tell you guys why poke damage is really important later but there are times where you can literally just push for a lot of poke not necessarily otk but you can end up burning your opponent for game later on and it's very very important so that's why comma two comes up here and there even though that she does only half the attack damage if she attacks directly and then three comma three comma three searches your one or your two if anything else does battle damage right so this is really important your sendra sujik is really good because it's an honest from hand if need be but the best part about it is at the end of all your normal summons because these all normal summon themselves out right so at the end of all your normal summons you summon your sujik you can activate the sujik effect you can pick one of them to boost their attack by a thousand so that's really important as well because again you can boost something like comma two for a thousand and then the battle damage is still going to be half but it's going to be at 2800 now so you're going to be doing 1400 directly even through monsters so that's why sujik is really good that's why these are the best ones and for anyone also sorry if i skipped over it but if anyone also is not familiar with yosenju what all of these cards do essentially is when they're normal summon you can normal summon another yosenju that's not the same name from your hand so you can go normal summon comma one comma one effect to normal summon comma two they're not special summons and that's very important they're not special summons they're all normal summons right and then comma two for example normal summon effect you can actually summon a comma three but you can also summon another comma one from hand if you had another one so that's really important to note because even if you don't have one two and three in your hand if you have like two ones and a two then it's fine because you can still get all three on the field so these are the best ratios i would not change these up at all these are like the ratios that i swear by and if you want to be competitive and if you want to be able to win games as much as possible if that's possible these are the best ones for you then moving on to the spell cards we are just playing a bunch of draw power and power spells essentially so we're playing three extra we don't need the extra deck too much in this deck so extrav is very important getting extra cards to your hand is very very powerful two pot of duality of course again like i said this is why it's important to note that these are all normal summons because you can use duality in this deck and duality just helps you pick the card that you want to add to your hand so this card is insanely powerful one called by the grave called by the grave just has so many uses so many applications and two fire formation tanky this actually came with two in the most recent ban list and it's actually really important that it's at two because all your monsters are beast warriors and so for that reason you can pretty much search any missing piece that you need now just before i get into the traps because you guys can see we are playing a lot of trap cards just before i get into them i do want to talk about there's one thing that you guys might be looking at this and being like why aren't you playing it okay so i'm not playing ash blossom and i know people are going to come at me for this and people are going to be like but ash is so important in the game in the format today it is don't get me wrong ash is a very important card in today's format however in this deck you really want to focus on going first you really want to focus on building your boards and sometimes ash funny enough is a brick for you and you never really want bricks in this deck unfortunately so games two and games three if you know you're going to be going second yes you can side in hand traps nibiru is a great card in this deck for example because all your your sendrus come back to your hand at the end phase so for that reason the is always going to be good for you right so once you go into your side deck post side you can do some things but for the main deck you really want to focus on going first you really want to be able to win those games especially as soon as you go first you set your traps and those traps are going to do all the work for you right so speaking of traps you are playing three rivalry of the warlord this is the only floodgate that you're playing essentially each player can only control one type of monster and all your monsters are beast warriors so rivalry is really really good in this deck rivalry does hurt a lot of other 
deck, so that's why this card is insanely powerful. Oh, I should mention, actually, technically, Macrocosmo here is also a Floodgate, but we'll get to Macro in a little bit. But yeah, Rivalry is the main one you're playing here. Then you're playing three Trap Trick, because Trap Trick is essentially going to get to you into any of the other traps that you guys are going to see. So here, you're going to play three D-Barrier. Yes, we're playing D-Barrier in the main deck. Now, I know Despia has kind of fallen off a little bit in terms of popularity. Now, the deck is still insanely powerful, but yes, in terms of popularity, it has fallen off, because Sword Soul is picking up some hype. We got Punk Theory on Synchro is picking up some hype, but that's okay because D-Barrier beats them all. Pendulum is even picking up some hype, right? D-Barrier beats that as well. So D-Barrier is really, really good because if you think about all of the metagame, not just the Despia matchup, but all of the metagame. Sword Soul is really good into that. Of course, like I said, it's good into Despia. It's good into Punk Synchro. Now the Punk Synchro decks can maybe put out, you know, like a Therion Regulus if they're playing the Therion package and that's an Omni negate for them. But otherwise, like that's all they're really doing because they can't go into any of the Synchro plays. If you think about a lot of the top tier meta decks in today's format, they kind of do just lose to D-Barrier right so d-barrier is such a powerful card i thought hey let's just play it in the main deck it's, it's good enough in this deck and this deck can do it really well right so three d-barrier two stormy mirror force now stormy mirror force is very interesting because there's another one that you guys can play that you guys can see down here and that is drowning mirror force so you can swap between drowning and storming it's really up to you guys but the reason i like storming a little bit more is because there are times you do go into the extra deck and if you have anything on your side of the field essentially drowning is dead there are going to be times you are sitting on an xyz monster so for that reason i decided to play this storming mirror force i think storming is still really really good people don't expect battle traps in today's format and i think it's really good in that sense because they're going to see oh you're playing your senju all your senju monsters are going to come back to your hand in your end phase okay we'll just attack for a bunch of damage it's like no you won't i have the storming mirror force so that's why i think storming mirror force is really really cool in today's format it's kind of like one of those spicy tech cards that i'm playing i think it's one of those things where people just don't expect it and so it can come up and be really really good when it does come up and then we're playing two sanctum and one scythe of course because you can trap trick into your sanctum and shutting out your opponent for a full turn is a enough for this deck to just win you games like i'm being serious when i say that because you guys are going to see once i get into the extra deck why that's so easy to just otk your opponent and even if you don't otk your opponent you can come really close and end up burning them later so this this deck is very very powerful in that sense so just one sanctum like one trap trick into sanctum is very very powerful then you're playing three imperm imperm is really nice because it technically is a hand trap for you but it's one of those things if you're going first then you can of course set it it's also searchable off trap trick you wouldn't really want to search off trap trick most of the time but you technically could three punishment of course you don't go into the extra deck too too much so punishment is really good and it does give you access to some cards in the extra deck that can help you with your game state so that is really good as well and then finally the 40th card in one macro cosmo which is a technically another floodgate and the really nice thing about this deck is that your cards all come back to your hand at the end phase right so macro cosmo is really good because it just says any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead and the problem with a lot of decks is they can't actually play through that because if you think about the meta right and you think about something like let's just say sword soul just the first deck that came to mind they can't tie anything because everything's going to be banished right a lot of cards that send cards to the graveyard can't be able to do it because everything gets banished so macrocosmo is actually really really good this format and it, it can come up really really well so i really like this 40 card main deck this is a really really solid deck list i think in my opinion and i've had so much fun testing with it so now let's get into the extra deck and when i get into the extra deck this is going to kind of tie everything together and i know it sounds weird that the extra deck something that you don't actually go into too often is what ties everything together but it can right and it does and i'll show you guys why so first of all you're playing three entis of course entis punishment is very very powerful if you guys don't know if entis is sent to the graveyard you get to pop a card on the field so essentially you get to pop two if you just flip punishment that's that's why this card is insane because this card on its own is just pop two cards in the field so so crazy then we're playing one fossil warrior skull knight skull knight is kind of similar to entis where if it's in the graveyard you can banish it and you can just pop a monster on the field so skull knight is another form of disruption if you banish all your entises the reason you're playing three and you guys are gonna see we're playing multiples of everything is of course because we're playing extrav so you want to at least have one of them so that's why we're just playing the one skull knight as like technically a fourth entis if needed but then we're playing one fear G and one omega now you guys might be wondering why why are you making fair g why are you making omega how are you even doing this right well the thing is you're never actually going to be making omega you're never actually going to be making fair g they actually are pretty good punishment targets because if you send fair g for example off of punishment fair g has an effect when it's sent to the graveyard you can draw a card and put a card to the bottom of your deck so if you do happen to draw your scythe you can put the scythe back into your deck right and you have a sanctum set you can put the scythe right back into your deck and you get to draw a new card right so fair g is really good in that sense omega has an effect in the graveyard where essentially you can target another card in your graveyard and then you can shuffle this card plus the other card back into your deck so it's really powerful because you can technically if you lose some of your usenjus you can put them back into your deck and then you have more resources so it kind of helps you just resource a little bit better you don't go into it super super often but when it does come up it's really really powerful then we're playing three cowboy now this is a card that i want to talk about cowboy in this deck is so so good and essentially the reason for that is because as you guys can see the yosenju monsters have pretty decent attack points right you have 1600 1800 1500 suja can boost anything by a thousand 
So there are a lot of times, especially with Tenki back at two now, there's a lot of times where you have three or four of these guys in your hand, right? If you stun your opponent with a D barrier or with a scythe and they don't end up with any monsters on the field or with like a one monster on the field, whatever, you can actually OTK your opponent. Gaga -ga -ga Cowboy, what this lets you do is as soon as you poke your opponent for a bunch of damage, you go Cowboy and you can Cowboy them for game. You guys are going to be very surprised by how many times you can Cowboy your opponent for game. And Cowboy is not a once per turn. You know what that means? If you do have four of them, like I was saying earlier, you make double Cowboy and you're just burning them from game. Cowboy is such a powerful card in this deck. And I know it sounds funny to say, but it works in this deck specifically because this whole deck is essentially stun your opponent, poke, stun your opponent, poke, stun your opponent, poke. And for that reason, it's like, hey, so I'm going to stun you. I'm going to poke. Now, if you're within the, enough range to cowboy you, okay, there you go. If you're not, okay, I'll just do it again next turn because I have more D barriers. I'm going to have more traps to set. I'm going to have more cards to play. And then I'm just going to keep poking until you either lose or I can go into cowboy to burn you. So cowboy is really, really good in that sense. Then we're playing two tornado dragon. This is mostly just if we end up playing another back row deck randomly. So this is pretty good. Uh, two Zeus, because sometimes when you do have cowboy or you do have tornado dragon, and let's say you have tornado dragon, you pop a card, you attack, you can make a Zeus and Zeus becomes really powerful. So I like two of that. And then two Baguska because Baguska is just insanely powerful in today's format. And if you see a matchup where you're like, if I just put a Baguska down, they lose, then this is a situation to do so. So that's why you're playing these. This extra deck is really, really good it ties everything together i think this deck is super super fun i think you guys should try it out yourselves trust me when i say this is the competitive way to play in today's format you don't want to be playing really random cards that you might be thinking oh but isn't lets me draw a card or lets me do this or that doesn't matter it doesn't help you win and that's that doesn't matter for you then right so that's why this deck is very very powerful and i i think i'm enjoying this deck very very much so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy this is my take on how you can play control yosenju in today's format now the nice thing about yosenju is that there's so many different different ways to play Yosenju. You can play going second Yosenju. You can play the going first, which is what we're doing today. If you guys want to see different variants, let me know in the comment section down below and I can get that done for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy. I really hope that we can continue to grow together as a community, continue to get better together as a community. I appreciate you all. Thank you all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.